attendees can join. Not actually time yet. No, but yeah, we have a not, quorum. Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't want you guys to start discussing anything important and not have a quorum. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? So it's looking like um, there's nothing coming in. It's just been so slow lately with applications, but there's nothing coming in for the next meeting, which is the December, would that be December 5th? Um, so we could cancel that meeting. We already have the Pioneer Fields project is wanting to continue to December 19th. So we have that on the December 19th agenda. So it depends on whether or not anything gets continued tonight, um, whether we have the December sale. Okay, okay, very good. Really weirdly um, quiet. What is going on with the Pioneer field? They are um, going before the, their, their planning board um, hearing date got delayed for, I can't remember what reason. It might've been the <laughs> planning board had too many things on their agenda and they pushed them off and they pushed Pioneer Field off until their December like sixth meeting. <laughs> And so the applicant said, let's just put it on December 19th. And we still don't have any new, we can talk about this on the, when it, it comes up on the agenda, but yeah, we still don't have any new plans. Julia, did you make the uh, MRBA meeting? Yeah, the last one I was there. Um, I'm trying to remember what. Oh, we mainly oh, we talked actually the, most of the time about Salisbury. Mm. Which, um, they're doing a lot. They're putting together like a Salisbury Beach management plan that they're getting permitted very specific for a very specific area. They're getting permitted as a notice of intent um, to do beach nourishment in front of all these private homes. Um, so that all the homeowners got together and put a, put together like a joint notice of intent. Um, so that was what they spent most of the time talking about. Um, and then we talked a little bit about beach grass planting and fencing and stuff with DCR. Um, hey, did any of you guys go to the pink house meeting yesterday? No. no, no. Did, Did you? you? No, I'm just wondering what happened. I guess we'll know tomorrow's daily news. Yeah, that was the other thing that we talked about at MRBA was the pink house. Um, <laughs> very, there were some big, um, I should say, like emotional arguments being made. So strong arguments. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what happened. I don't know anyone yeah. who went to that. All right, it's 6.45. Let's uh, get this meeting going. Uh, let's bring this meeting to order. This is the November 21st, 2023 Newburyport Conservation Commission meeting taking place on the Zoom platform. And this meeting is being recorded. The uh, first item on the agenda are the meeting minutes from October 17th, 2023. Anybody have any uh, questions or comments or anything? Motion to approve. Second. All right, roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. 
David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? I'm staining. I wasn't there. Okay. Uh, Dan Warshaw? Yes. And uh, I will vote yes. All right. Uh, next item, uh, do we have any Plum Island updates? So, yeah, we were just discussing this briefly. Plum, um, not many Plum Island updates. There was an MRBA meeting a couple weeks ago, and um, most of the discussion revolved around the Salisbury Beach Management Plan um, and the Pink House discussions. So nothing really new for, for Newburyport to report. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, on to certificates of compliance, et cetera. First item is uh, Joseph Hill to Parker Street, request for extension of order conditions. So um, I don't know if you all remember this project. It's a subdivision off of the, at the end of Parker Street before you get to the traffic circle down at Route 1 on the right-hand side of the road um, to Parker Street, and you kind of turn up the hill. It's after the, the um, graveyard, and you there's a... Uh, multi-unit subdivision up there, a lot of townhomes, and they um, are almost done. The, the permit was issued in 2017. It was to expire December 2020. Um, at the time, they weren't done yet, so the commission extended it for them for another three years, so it's set to expire this December 2023, and they're almost done. There's one more at the very back. If you were to drive up the driveway there, there's one more set of townhomes that need to be constructed at the top of the hill, and they also need to finish putting in the rain garden, which they have installed the rain garden um, and the fence that was associated with it that was required by the commission. Um, but it needs to be monitored, um, you know, for survival of the plantings and, you know, the drain, the final drainage needs to get fixed up and stuff like that. So they want another two year extension um, so that it, their new order conditions or this order conditions would then expire in December 2025. Um, we have Ryan Clemens. Is, is oh. he part of? Uh... I will allow him to talk. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, Ryan. Okay, Ryan, when you are ready, you can you can unmute yourself and you can um, address the commission with any other details that you want to provide. All right, thank you, Julia. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Ryan Clemens of Mead Tellerman Costa here on behalf of uh, Parker 2 Realty Trust. And I mean, Julia gave a great summary. So here, if you have any uh, further questions. Okay. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't object to the extension, but I, if, if was it going to be another two years before they do the, the rail trail work that needs to be done? Because it's, so, it's finished on both sides. And so people have to walk in the street and somebody's going to get hurt. Um, and waiting another two years, it's already been six. Um, it seems like they could do that work. Yeah, so that work is definitely set to be completed within those two years in the coming spring and summer 2024 to finish up that connection. So it won't be at the end of two years. It'll be um, coming up soon after, you know, all the snow and ice is uh, through thawing. Okay, so they will do it in the next construction season. Yes. Okay. Why such a long extension then? It's for, so it's for the um, rail trail, the two rain gardens, which they're, uh, they're constructed, but they're not complete yet. And they need to tie into the drainage system too. Uh, and then it's also those uh, last units, that last building that Julia mentioned with units 13, 14, 15, which are framed and got their um, insulation initial siding in, but nothing final on the outside yet. So they need to uh, finish up that and then other uh, other finishing touches on the landscaping too. And yeah, in matching I... with, as we said, uh, as I said before, the um, uh, matching up with the construction seasons. 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I think that it's um it's sort of, it's not that it is going to take all of the two years. It's just that it will probably take more than one year. And, and the, um, uh, th this, what you had said about the construction of the rail trail happening in the next construction season in the spring, is that written someplace or is that uh, understood? I, I, this has been dragging on so long. It'd be nice to, to know that that's going to happen and not in another year after. I don't believe the deadline set other than at the uh, extinct when the order of conditions extinguishes. Um, and I don't believe it's set on the um, stages of plans either, no. But are you suggesting that the owner has uh, has said that that's what's going to happen? Because that's what you said. Yes, no, the, that's what the um, that's what the trust has told me. Yeah, I think um, David and Stephen, everybody at City Hall also wants in the planning office and their other permits associated with this project, wants um, the rail trail to be finished ASAP also for all of those reasons. So um, yeah, and the trust understands that too. Yeah. Okay, but this this extension goes till December of 2025. So yes. you know, if if they don't do it next construction season, then they'll have to wait. I'd like to, is there anything we can do to put it in writing or somehow say you will do it in the next construction season? Just, um, just because the they say they're gonna do it. Yeah, the problem is that an extension, you can't really change the special conditions, but what you can do is to say that you won't give another extension. I mean, you don't, you, there's no promises that you need to make in terms of them going past 2025, it's not done. Yeah, the, the conditions are set. We, yeah. we agreed on the conditions. So um, I guess our our choice is to give it give them an extension or not give them an extension. Um, but well, I, I would think we would. And then the planning office can harass them for uh, to get it done. Okay. Well, and again, they are. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say that yes, there are they are committed to getting it done in the next uh, cycle, and especially because it is that last connection remaining. So the um, they do feel the pressure, and I'm sure the planning office will be on them about it as well. Because they they will need occupancy permits for these units, so there's it's not like there can be things that left get undone. Like that. Okay, well maybe we should make it clear that there won't be another extension. At least for that part. Yeah. Okay. I can make, I can make a note about that in the extension letter. If that's what you all want. Yeah, that. That, that would be a good thing. I, I'd like to see that. So we'll need a, uh, a motion. Uh, motion to approve the extension request. But do we have to, sorry, do we have to add something though about the fine, this being the final extension as a part of the motion? Um, I would just caution, I would just say if you're, if it's the rail trail piece that you're most concerned about, you could vote to um, issue the extension with a note to the applicant that, you know, advising them that you will not, you know, you do not intend to issue an additional extension in the future for this, the rail trail component of the project. But I would be careful about making that a blanket because you just never know what can happen between now and then with any of the other elements of the project. You don't want them to be stuck in a situation where something out of everyone's control causes yeah. a delay, you know. Okay. okay, so I'll amend my motion to to say that we will not issue another extension for the rail trail work. That 
Okay. Do we have a second? I think somebody already seconded it. Oh, he just made a. Oh, but he just changed it. I'll second it. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that again. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I'll vote yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a great rest of the night. You too. Thank you. All right. Next item is Luke Shipman, 217 Northern Boulevard, request for determination. Okay. I'm going to move over Tom Hughes, panelist for this. Um, and let's see here. Got to pull this up without messing up. There we go. All right. There. Good evening. Good evening. Um, All right. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting uh, here on behalf of Luke Shipman. Um, Julia, I think what's probably um, simplest is rather than starting with a site plan, can we go to the architectural sure. profiles? Yep. Yep. So if you look at the top that's existing, you look at the bottom that's proposed. And if we go to the second sheet, Um, yeah, so if you take a look on probably the most informative is if you look at the right hand drawing, you see that there's a single story level. And then you take a look at the bottom, the chimney goes away and this little off centered um, addition goes on top of that. So that's what the project is all about is, you know, some general renovations, but the big add on is that second floor area there's no impact on the ground other than just temporary construction um so now if we can go to the site photos and then we'll go to the site plan so if you take a look at the site you know it's a fairly well-worn site that addition is that area off to the left um so that area will then become a like a two-story and shifted slightly towards this um sort of at grade patio area if we can uh, go to the next and just kind of flip through them. Okay, so there, um, if you see the tree there, we don't anticipate the tree being in the way. Um, Eileen Graff is pretty certain this can go forward and that tree can remain just as is. Um, we can go to the next. So you can see again, this is a the dune is sort of already heavily altered on this site. Um, and then I guess the final will be the one at the bottom, which is just kind of a broad view of it. Um so or actually the one above that, I think is that one. Yeah. So so that's a view. You can see the area where where the work would happen is on the right. The the dune is either lawn or pavement or otherwise altered on this site. There's really no areas of of um you know, fully functioning dune. There's certainly plenty of dune that functions, but not, you know, not what you typically think of when you think of sand dune. Um, and if we can go to the site plan. Yep. So you can see we have a fairly tight limit of work, that kind of gold dashed line on here. And then we have notes about, you know, the the um, contractor parking material storage in the existing driveway. We have a dumpster location outlined. Um, so this is really a pretty minimal project. And in the bottom left hand corner of the structure, there's a small wood landing to be removed and a granite step to be removed. And that area gets planted with native vegetation. Um, even though the addition itself is going over an area of wood deck, so it's not really impacting any vegetation. We just provide that as uh, mitigation for the temporary impacts. Um, and then if you can see, there's a note that any portion of the vegetated area that's in the work limit is restored to existing condition after project completion. So is that existing condition beach grass or lawn grass or what is it? Um, probably best go to the view from the um, west, I think I gave you. Um, to the right of that one. the photos? One. No, no, so the tab to the right. I think oh. that's probably... Oh no! One go go the other way. And oh, this right there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so it's kind of um, I wouldn't describe it as as dune grass, but it's just um, 
it's sort of loose vegetation. It's not, you know, it's nothing crazy. Um, I don't think it's full on lawn. We can flip through those photos and see if I've got one that shows that. Um, let's see. It's pretty much lawn around here. Um, yeah, pretty good lawn there. I would say that, uh, oh, I guess my question's, well, why don't you answer the vegetation question first? Yeah, let's see if there's a better photo. I think it's sort of like worn lawn. I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything. I think, don't think there, if I recall, there was no area of like dune grass. Yeah, you can see that's lawn in that area. Yeah. Any chance we could get beach grass there? Um, you can't replace the lawn with new lawn. No, I, obviously. I mean, I think what we would be looking at is what has happened in the past is if you drive equipment over lawn and you don't add any material, you just sort of rake it and and throw down seed to repair scars. We're not looking at anything more than that. I think we could um, we could probably what would be more effective on this site would be offer up you know, a couple of native shrubs that we could place somewhere on site. We are doing some dune grass planting in that area where the um, where the grade pad and the granite step are coming out. Um, but maybe if we, you know, if, if we could have uh, two shrubs at a location to be named later in coordination with Julia, um, you know, a couple of bayberry or maybe some uh, beach plum, then I could coordinate with the applicant on where those where those could go. Because otherwise, it'll just be kind of a funny little stranded area of dune grass surrounded by lawn. Yeah. The, the photo that's up now, yep. all that um, patio and so forth, that that's just going to remain just the way we see it? Yeah. It's a fairly low first floor on the house. So, you know, they they do use that. So that's, that's remaining. Okay. Uh, you don't think they're going to want to replace any of that? There was nothing that I was made aware of. Um, it would not surprise me if they want to replace surface boards on it. Um, so that should, I mean, I just want to make, because this house, as you can, you know, they're doing substantial amount of work to it. And you, you mentioned in the RDA other renovations, but you don't specify what those other renovations are. I don't know if they're interior I think or it, exterior. Yeah. Windows, I mean, it's, whatever. it's fairly minimal. I think the, the zoning record has, um, more information on any interior stuff, but the, like the chimneys coming out and obviously they're going to have to rearrange how that extra space kind of fits into the second floor. But this isn't like, as far as my understanding and looking at those uh, architectural renderings, this is not like wholesale, you know, full, full on rehab of the place. It's, um, but it is, you know, it's general renovations that are not really in the jurisdictional area, but, um, you know, I think that the decks, if they don't have to change structure, the decks, according to the ordinance, as long as they don't expand them, they are allowed to be, um, you know, actually they can actually be replaced in kind in the language that's in the ordinance, as long as they're not expanded. But I don't think there were any plans to do anything, but I am looking at those surface boards in that photo. And I think it wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to swap out deck boards on that. Um, 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 there could be what's the um, what type of foundation is um, under or supporting that shed addition that's going to be built on? Um, I don't have that information. It's a solid foundation for the building. Um, and there's no work proposed on the foundation for that. All the work is is going up. So I know Eileen would have looked at making sure that that uh, that that can hold it. There's no work on the ground there. Okay, um... I, did, I did not crawl under there. I can Google the. Um, the assessor's card real quickly if you want to give me a second and take a look and see if that's got more information on that. There was no proposal to, this isn't the one with the proposal to install helical piles under there. No, no. no. 
No, that's that's um yeah. the hearing yeah, at the right. end. Yeah. So you're just gonna you you know, build right on top of there. Yeah, that's my understanding. That's what the architectural plan show and what that site plan shows. But is there something underneath the house or that's just that's it's just built right on top of the the ground? I mean, it has a foundation. I'm looking to see right now if um if the assessor's card is any help. Hold on just one second. So the main house has a basement. Um, and that area is labeled um, FEP. Which is porch enclosed. So it's sitting right on the ground. Like well, it must have some kind of foundation. Um, well, at this point, they're not proposing any alterations. So if they were going to do anything, they'd have to notify us. Right. Yeah, I and I can confirm that information with Eileen. And uh, again, if, if the commission, I think I'm the only other thing on the agenda tonight. So if you just be patient with me a second, let me text Eileen and see if she can maybe fill me in on that. Um, another thing, Tom, I mean, just because you mentioned additional renovations, but those weren't specified. So right. that could be, I mean. Generally, yeah. Generally, when I say that, it is things like siding and interior. Yeah. But so I guess what I'm getting at is, is do we, I, it would be great to have a, a substantial, um, substantial improvement form filled out for this. Okay. Just so we can confirm, because what I don't want to have happen is we get a building permit come in that shows a much more extensive amount of work that then we have to look at whether or not it was a substantial improvement and go back again. And, you know, I'd rather just do it as part of this process. Right. Is that something you'd be willing to do as sort of a negative three with a with a condition that that be submitted prior to the start of work? It's It's reasonable if it's OK with the commission. I think it's like, a reasonable. My understanding of the project is it wouldn't come close to approaching that, but yeah, I would think that it wouldn't. But just given that it's a total unknown to right, us, right? Understood. You, you know what I mean? No, understood. That makes sense. Um, the assessor's card, otherwise, is not overly helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what do people think about that? It does have a building value of 360 something on the assessor's card. So, I mean, there's plenty of budget to work with for a smaller addition like that. Using that, and then obviously there's the other um, appraisal option too, but I don't think we'd even go near that. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with as long as we get something. Yeah, they do say in the note about that addition, they say second floor offset from existing partially cantilevered. So I'm not sure. It might be a little more complicated than just uh, bearing down if they're trying to use the cantilevering off of what's there. But they still don't say anything about uh, a foundation. So. Yeah, I'm not getting anything back from Eileen. So I think, I mean, as shown on the on the site plan and as, as shown on the architectural plan, there's no work proposed on that area mm -hmm. underneath. So I think if, if anything changes with that, we'll just have to come back to you. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you're not working out, nothing's happening outside the, this existing footprint. 
but given that it's the AO zone, it should we should get the substantial improvement form just to confirm, and that right. would include, you know, making sure that there's no new footings or, um, you know, support is required for the admission, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm good with a a uh, what is it the negative determination you know three negative determination with uh, the requirement to get that form in before anything happens. I don't know if anybody else has any heartburn with that. No, I just want to go back to the shrubs. Hmm. Um, maybe if we could have three and they were planted in a clump instead of you know one here and one 20 feet away and another 20 feet away so that you right. have so something. if you if you um if you do a negative three you could condition three shrubs to be three native um doing appropriate shrubs or something along those lines to be uh in a single planting area or something. yeah to be to be planted uh you know in a location to be approved by the conservation administrator Okay. And, also and your here. points noted. It probably my recommendation would probably be bayberry or beach plum, but okay. Or like two of one and one of the other. Yeah. Way. Yeah. I think but I wouldn't I, I wouldn't mix the two in the same clump. That's the only thing. Okay. Because the bayberry will take over the uh the beach plum typically. You say something, Julie? Yeah, um, I just wanted to mention maybe you might want to consider another special condition. We don't want to get too many of these here because it's an RDA, but um, that there may be no expansion of the footprint of the at grade decks. Just because, you know, when they're going to be doing this renovation work, I can see those being damaged, get, wanting to replace them, et cetera, make it all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt to make it explicit. Again, the site plan does not show any change in that, and and that is documented. So, yeah, yeah, okay. Conditions fine with me. Mm -hmm. Are we all set? You want to make a motion? Make a motion for a negative three determination with the three. Um, requirements that we mentioned. Which is I'll second that. Were you going to repeat them, Julie? Yeah, I was just going to repeat them. So the three are that we get the substantial improvement form um, before issuance of the determination. We get three new native shrubs to be planted in location to be approved by the conservation administrator. And there may be no expansion of the at grade, of the footprint of the at grade decks or additions um, to, I put, I'll, I think we should also say additions to the existing fencing or replacement of fencing without mm -hmm. additional review and approval by the commission. And Mr. Chairman, before you take the vote, um, the answer on the foundation, I just got back from Eileen. So it is some concrete and some monotones, she said. Um, I think she means sonotubes is my guess, <laughs> um, but it will support the addition. Um, sonotubes, yes, yeah, she just corrected herself. So, so thanks for your patience on that. Okay, all right then. Uh, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshall. Yes. And Ivo. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, can I get a uh, motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Second. We'll call Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, first item is City of Newbury 438 High Street, notice of intent. Uh, they have requested a continuance to our December 19th meeting. Would we like to do that? And would we like to make a motion to uh, 
continue to the December 19th meeting? I move that we continue. To, uh, oh, go ahead. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I move that we continue this uh, matter until December, what did we say, 19th? Second. Second. All right, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Uh, last but definitely not least, uh, Peter Newton, 6 Julia Street, Notice of Intent. All right. Good evening. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting here on behalf of Peter Newton. Um, so 6 Julia Street is one where they are reconstructing an addition um, and adding deck. The uh, property that you see here, the, the rectangle you see on the cover is actually where the house is. It's a double lot. Um, and when we get to the site plan, I'll show you where the whole thing is. But if we can look at the flood map, you'll see that this is all in X zone where the building is. Um, and then if you see where the garage is, which is just partially in the edge of the flood there, that is the other lot. So that extends uh, out with a driveway, et cetera. Um, if we can go to the aerial image. Okay, so here you kind of get the uh, the sort of full view of the structure, the garage at the, the upper right, and the structure is right there with the shed and back, um, right there exactly. So you have you know pavement there, you've got a garage, you've got driveway uh, that is in the X zone. If we can go to uh, the next, I just have some sort of general photos. Um, Similar to the last one, there's sort of remnant lawn, although it, the dune is winning the battle here. Um, you know, it's very challenging to keep a lawn up in a dune system. They just, uh, they want more water than nature gives them. Um, so anyway, so what we're looking at, if we can go, we can probably skip by all these. I think, I think you have a sense of what the uh, site is like. We can go right to the site plan. Okay, so on this one, um, because we needed to do foundation work, if we were going to keep the addition that was there, we are actually demolishing it and rebuilding on helical piles. Um, and then building that expanded deck area, um, again, supported on helical piles. Um, we have uh, areas where we're removing some hardscape uh, including some pavement we're we're planting we're moving concrete up on that other lot um and so we actually notified about us for both lots it's really combined for zoning purposes anyway um mainly because we're removing that little area of concrete so we are removing some some uh pavement down there next to the house kind of skinnying that area up and planting there so we are you know i think the dune is um, is definitely gaining function with this project as we uh, go forward with this uh, with this addition and with the uh, and with the deck work. Um, I think the next sheet has the profile view or or bottom is that in the bottom right here? Maybe on that sheet. Um. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Right. Oh, sorry. Um. Let me. Yeah. Just... Everett always puts that profile on there somewhere. Yeah. It's so. You kind of have to zoom in to really see it, but everything's elevated up the two feet for uh, for sand movement. And, you know, helical piles. So we've uh, we've got our elevation. Um, you know, we've got the demo and rebuild. Everything's supported on piles. We're outside the floodplain with the entire structure. So we can go through the architecturals to kind of get a better sense of kind of what, what it looks like but it's a relatively straightforward project and it does comply. So you can see there's your existing. Um, and if you see kind of the roof line and everything on that uh, addition area with the deck at the bottom, and then we can kind of go down. Okay, so there's the deck area on the bottom with existing. And that's all so far all existing. Okay, so now we start getting into proposed. 
and you can kind of see it's it's a double level deck now and it's open on the underneath there's you know if you noticed on the existing there's lattice on the proposed there's not um everything's elevated the existing home is still solid foundation there still will be some pavement on the lot there'll still be some kind of that lawn struggling to survive but there will be some areas that 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 kind of stuff gets removed and and mitigated and we have a net increase of 108 square feet i think it is of vegetation on on site but i think even more importantly we're getting rid of some areas of concrete and pavement so it's not just a, a improvement in doing function from the vegetation change but it's also from removal of hard structures and getting rid of the lattice under the existing deck The um, green sort of long oval <clears throat> shape you pointed out before, what did you say is there now? Um, oh, on the site plan, if we can go back yeah, to that, um, there's an area of pavement. So, so if you see that, right. part of what's coming out is the lawn next to the pavement. And we just kind of gave it the oval shape because it would have looked really funny if we just kind of saw cut the, the pavement. Oh, so that's, that's already there. That's the lawn that's already there. Um. If you can, yeah, if you see like the area that's to the left of that line that cuts through it, the below, it's almost um, like the, Julia, can you follow right. the edge of the driveway? Yep. Right here. Yeah. So that's the edge of the driveway. Everything to the mm -hmm. left of that line and then below that line is pavement. Oh, I Everything see that's in the area to the right inside that sort of peanut shape is, um, that that is all lawn we're just taking out lawn and putting in dune grass but the idea is to at least have it look like somebody was landscaping it as opposed to just saw cutting out the pavement for the numbers and and leaving the lawn so thank you tom to the to the right of the peanut yep uh, is that, that's lawn um yeah it's kind of struggling lawn i think there was some some decent photos that showed that area um I think that might be the top one, maybe. Yeah, here's yeah. the pavement, right. Right, so, so there's the pavement. You can see there's lawn, but it's... Struggling. Yeah. Sad-looking lawn. Yeah, and well, you know, and lawns like this, they will green up a bit in the summer, but they sure die off fast at the end of the season. Um, you um, know, my why... hope is, is we do this. We, you know, we get this planted and they begin to enjoy having some dune grass around and notice that it's a lot less maintenance than than lawn. And maybe, you know, maybe they come in and ask Julia if they can expand the planting areas. But we certainly meet the the ordinance and the um, Wetland Protection Act in terms of the the need to mitigate for the project and the uh, and the, you know, no adverse effect to dune function. We're certainly improving dune function. Um. Tom, so if, if if part of this pavement back here is coming out, yeah, to be planted, um, it seems as though that doesn't leave them with a parking space. Or so, what what would be the point of leaving any of this? It's pavement? still it's still a a stable um, footpath. If we look at the um, you look at the site plan, it kind of gets you. It yeah. gets you to that bulkhead. And, you know, I think I think they like the idea of having a solid, stable surface to bring things in and out of the basement. And, um, you know, it yeah. it still meets a function for them and its removal isn't needed to meet the performance standards. So. But they still have parking. Yeah, they have enough ne parking next to Julia Street. Right. They have they have the parking next to Julia Street, and they also have the parking with the garage. Over here, off yeah. The point. That's yeah. more of a pea stone gravel and kind of we call it a grass driveway. It's just sort of looser, sandier gravel that the veg comes into. So, Tom, I I see there's a there's a concrete walkway and then a wooden walkway there near the garage that that seem to go nowhere. Yeah, they bring them to the to this property. 
Okay, but the, once... the, the concrete is an apron, and then there's the concrete concrete walk that runs along the side of it, and then the yeah. wood walk, and it brings you to the edge of that fence. There's a chain link fence, and it brings you to the edge that brings you into this property. So, is there a gate in the chain link fence, or I think it's the end of the fence. I think the fence just ends, oh, yeah. so that's why it's at that weird angle. It does look like the fence just ends right there. Okay, but then, then there's no walkway of any sort over towards the yeah, house. Yeah, then it's just that rough, sandy lawn. It's just trampled, you know, walk area. Okay. I, yeah, I'm I not thinking... saying the layout of this was done by a landscape architect. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's sort of funky Plum Island that has evolved over the years through the use and creativity of its owner. Okay. Um, so on that rectangle where we, next near the garage, we were planting beach grass. Yes. Um, what What is the surrounding vegetation like there? Is there... Um, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at that. Um, maybe the photos might be helpful. The area. Um, um, there's one that shows the garage. Um, yeah. Okay. Looks like, is this where we're looking at? I don't see. Yeah. Concrete, yeah. yeah it's kind of that sand area, but there's another one that shows that garage area better. Um, yeah. It looks sandy. Yeah, it's just kind of a shrubby area. Originally, I didn't think anything was happening on that lot, so I didn't really spend a lot of mental energy on it. And then, and then we came up with the concrete removal. What? What's the? Um, is that garage? They they store cars and so forth in that. I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, it's it's a functional garage. It's got garage you know, garage doors and it's just not used heavily for ongoing, you know, I mean, the, the current owners don't seem to park in there and, and back in and out all the time. Right. So that's why that kind of gravel drive is, is got some wispy green vegetation coming into it, but it's, um, but it is a fully functional and used garage. But not living space or anything of that sort. No, no, and it, and they're not really looking to do anything there. This is, you know, they've got their hands full on the looks project like they've he, got in front of them. It looks like your applicant Peter Newton has um his hand up, so I'm gonna yeah promote him to a panelist. Okay, so Peter, you will be able to unmute yourself in a minute. Yes, well, we're waiting for him. Um, so looking at that little triangle of sand, part of mm -hmm. which is we're going to revegetate. Or is it possible that we could just fill all of that with some some beach grass? The triangle of sand that you see in the in the image there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that was shown as vegetated on our site plan. Sparsely, yeah. Yeah, no, sparsely. It was. Um, I mean, Peter's about to join us. I, I think we could probably supplement vegetation in that area. The, um, yeah, that little problem, triangle there. Right. the The problem is that when you, um, when I go and look to call an area vegetated or unvegetated for purposes of filing with you guys, I can't, in good conscience, call an area that meets the one foot on center spacing that I'm proposing to plant call it unvegetated even though it's maybe sparse um so it has enough vegetation to be considered vegetated but yeah um if peter's okay with adding some dune grass into it we certainly can talk about that okay yes absolutely hello i'm peter newton How just to good? interject oh. here and thank you very much for the consideration i just wanted to go back to the garage question for a second so we do use it, or uh, we're we're very new homeowners here, about five months, but we are using that uh, for storage. And it's part of the reason too that 
as part of our mitigation here that we'll demo the shed, uh, which is a pretty good size shed uh, actually. And so that will just go away. Uh, and I wanna make sure that was clear. Yeah, Julia's highlighting it right now. Yeah. What's gonna go where the shed is now? Uh, that will be uh, partly uh, the the extended deck, and then uh, part of it will just be new open space that we'll plant in. And I believe that's look, that's part of Tom's plan. Yeah, if you look at the site plan, you can kind of see that things extend into that, and then we have a clamshell walkway, and then we plant the rest of the area. All right, here's the outline of the yeah. shed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was focused more on the fact that we're removing concrete and pavement, but we're also removing the shed, as as Peter noted. I mean, we've got, we're taking out a lot of things that, and a, there's a little concrete block wall coming out too. We're taking out a bunch of little things that have kind of grown through the, um, as that sort of the artistry of former owners and and their landscape prowess um, that we all know inhibits the dune function, and we're we're really improving dune function with the project just by removing those and, and planting them. Okay. But Peter, are you okay with throwing some beach grass in that triangular area? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We we, okay. we see doing more of that. One of you, I think, might have mentioned this, or maybe Tom did uh, earlier, but yes, absolutely. We see adding more dune grass over time. Yeah, we love okay. that. Actually, if you wanted to put some native shrubbery in there in place of dune grass, I that would be yeah. fine too. Yeah, I I can work with these guys to give them a list of, you know, of good plants to consider. And I'm I'm sure once they get the project underway, they can spend some time looking how they can improve the landscape and I can give them some ideas on how they can do that and improve dune function. I think in terms of what's in front of you for a project plan, um, you know, clearly from a performance standard, we meet it. We'll we'll add in the um, that triangle of planting. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe we have a DEP number. I've been emailing Jim Freely today, trying to see what's going on, and see if he can get me something. But Julia, you haven't seen anything, have you? No, I checked today also, and I didn't see anything. So yeah, it's too bad. So we can add that um, note and the thing that I'll um, I can talk to Peter about offline is whether, you know, we could think of doing something with that walkway from the garage. Um, that kind of funky wood walkway, I think the concrete may be a little bit much and it may also be sometimes that apron concrete that's near these garages is kind of integral to the foundation of the garage. So you don't want to I don't want to say that we want to pull that up but maybe we could get rid of the walkway and do like a clamshell path that might be a little more pleasant uh pleasant to the eye but offline we can talk about a couple things like that between now and that next meeting great okay, okay. and peter just to explain we since we don't have a file number from the state and it's probably has to do with holidays and the this time of year but um these guys can't actually close the hearing till we get that file number. So, so we'll mark up the plan. In the meantime, um, Julia, is it possible you could have a, an order sort of ready to go with the next meeting? Yep, I've already sort of started drafting it. So it will, it would be, we would be able to issue it right away after the next meeting if that's when the commission votes to close. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't worry about that in terms of timing. It would be, that would be December. Fifth, I believe, is our next meeting. Yeah, okay. and it sounds like you'll be the only one on the uh, agenda. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully by then we just need that DEP file number. Okay. So, are there any other issues the commission wants to, or questions the commission has, uh, so we can make sure that that is just very quick, in and out on that meeting in December. I'm all set. Yeah, I don't have anything. Anybody have anything? No. No, sounds good. Okay. Uh, any comments from the public?
look like any. Not not seeing any. Um, all right, so we're going to continue this to the December 5th meeting. Yep. Get a motion. Motion, motion to continue. continue to December 5th. Second. Second. Um, all right, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank yeah. you. Thank good you. Night. All right. Do we have anything else? Just wanted to mention one thing that we talked about at our last meeting, um, which is with regard to the, um, or do we want to close the public hearings first? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. All right. <laughs> Motion to close the public hearings. Second. All right, roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. I vote yes. Yes, Julie. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna switch, um, hold on a sec. I'm gonna do a new share with some photos of the, um, can you guys all see this picture? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is the last meeting we talked about the um, National Grid site down adjacent mm -hmm. to the rail trail along mm -hmm. the Merrimack. And there's still, as you can see, this sort of area that just will not grow in. And they proposed numerous times to supplement this area with plantings. The last report we got from them was October of 2022. And they, they gave us a plan, which was to plant in the spring, which they did. And um, unfortunately, can you all see this photo? Yeah. The next one. So most of it didn't survive. Like there's a lot of dead plants in here. There's one shrub back here, a couple of shrubs here and there look like they're hanging on and some grasses here and there. But for the most part, you can see, I think either with all of the rain, the seed, the seeding got washed out or it's hard to know what's happening here, but it certainly isn't um, looking very good. And as David pointed out, um, you know, it's time for them to come in and do and give us another report because it's been a year and this hasn't, whatever they proposed before hasn't worked. My, in my email to them, I suggested that um, in addition to getting us this report that they owe us each fall, that they, and we just extended their um, order conditions for more time so they can finish this area. But what if like, just, you know, I don't know how many years it's been. It's been years where nothing will grow here. Would it be um, amenable to you all? Would you prefer to see, or maybe in addition to them continuing to try to get things growing here, like a row of shrubs along the edge of this area, just so it screens it and provides some habitat value um, in this area where it's just really grass and sort of weeds um, where, but this, soil seems to be fertile and will you know support growth if they put some shrubs in here it would just screen it as well as provide some habitat but what happens to the area where nothing will grow i mean i don't know i, I it's it's sort of i just feel like i don't know how much longer we can continue to try to get things to grow in there for whatever reason it's never nothing has ever survived it could just be the way the water comes through there Maybe it comes at sort of significant speed and washes everything out. Maybe it ponds in there. I don't even know. They We should have them give us sort of an explanation of what they think what is happening. But year after year, we seem to not be able to. I, I guess I don't know what they've tried to plant there. Um, but maybe it's saltier than we think it is. Um, I don't know how often the water comes up in there. If, if it ever does. Um, well, I've seen water ponded over there. Um, it, 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 uh, there is standing water there uh, frequently. Is it after it rains or a, or a real high tide? Or... Um, I think it's after it rains, but um, I, I, I really haven't equated it. I've, I've just seen a, a lot of water. And, and in fact, 
um, where your arrow is, it it seems like that is, uh, you know, you'll see like a little pond there extending after the rain, after everything else. It's it's almost it's just standing water. Yeah, well, it might be worth taking a walk down there tomorrow afternoon when it stops raining. Or, uh, but isn't yeah. there a big tree right to the left of that area where nothing grows? If I'm thinking of this is the right like over there, here. Yeah, isn't there a big um, like sort of off the page here. There, yeah. there may be, I can't, I'm sorry, I don't have a photo that shows that space. That's okay, but, that's okay. Because it just doesn't um, make sense that it would grow there, but not there. That's I weird. know. Well, if you remember, this triangular area was supposed to be planted originally, but it's actually filled underneath here is all filled in with crushed stone. And that's sort of why we're in the situation with them to begin with, because what happened after they fix the seawall, they were supposed to plant this area and instead they filled it in with crushed stone as a drainage depression because that's where water was going. And so they kind of made it like a little bit of a drainage basin, but it was just crushed stone. It was looked horrible. It wasn't what the commission permitted and it was supposed to be vegetated. So we would negotiated back and forth with them on how they could remedy that situation. And they originally said, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll fill in with some loam and some mulch and stuff and we'll plant in certain areas. So it'll be sort of like a mixture of plants and crushed stone. So it would serve multiple functions. And they assured us that the plants would come up through the crushed stone, et cetera. It never worked. So then they put more soils down and planted again, and then they seeded and then planted again. And then we had the crazy drought summer, which was right after they did one round of planting and everything died in the drought. Then it was last fall, last spring, 2022, they planted again, and I believe they added more loam, planted again, and again, now we're here in the situation where nothing grew. So I don't know whether it's the fact of how, what we started with, which was sort of this area that was just strictly crushed stone, and we're trying to plant things on top of it that aren't appropriate, or whether it's something to do with the way... Um, it drains, you know, it's just. Well, in the meantime, they put in that crushed stone waterway, which I don't think we, they were approved. Did oh, we? That was their idea. <laughs> that was their idea. But I don't, I don't anyway. But so this um, area where the, where there's grass growing, this is okay, which is why I was wondering if we should just have them plant some a sh heavy shrub layer right there. Because that would probably work. Um, does Does Jordy have an opinion on this? I mean, it's uh, uh, Jordy I, sort of agree. Jordy agrees, um, but last, I mean, they gave us a report saying that they were working on it, and you know, we were all sort of going on the assumption that maybe this would, maybe they would come with up with a solution. Um, I haven't talked with Jordy about the idea of having them plant sort of a a shrub buffer along the rail trail here, but um, I don't mean, I don't know how he'd feel about that, but I can certainly ask him. It's just an idea. Yeah, I mean, all the the time and everything that J Jordy's put into all of this, uh, if, yeah. if uh, whatever yeah. he feels, <laughs> it's okay with me. Uh, right. uh, yeah, I wouldn't object to native shrubbery, um, maybe even a tree right. uh, along there to, to hide it, but um, of course, yeah. yeah, but of course, if you if you're hiding that, you're hiding the view to the river too, but mm -hmm. but who are, who wants to look over that thing at the river? Yeah, I know it's, it's just an spot. eyesore. I, I think at this point it's it's serving some sort of detention, you know, storm water function. And what it may be that that's what's preventing anything from growing properly in there. Um, so the, at least what we can do is screen it because it is right adjacent to the rail trail and provide some habitat values. Yeah, that, that would be fine with me. Yeah, um, I, I'd be okay with that. But I think more thicker than they mm -hmm. might plan, mm -hmm. um, you know, okay. something that's going to look like something in a relatively short time as opposed to 10 years. 
Yeah, I would think uh, that we would, if they were going to do something like that, we would ask them to give us a, a planting plan to okay. take a look at. <clears throat> and, and you know, forward on on where we stand and where they're headed. I'd I'd like them to come back and I mean, if they have a problem with the area because it's too salty or whatever it is, you know, come out, say it, and we'll take it from there. Yeah. yeah. So I've asked them to give us that report to to okay. give us this sort of fall report on the whole situation and what their assessment is. I just haven't gotten it yet, and um, and then I sent her you know, sort of my conceptual idea of just adding the shrubs, um, a buffer area just to screen it. In the meantime, yeah, and you know, get Jody's opinion too. Cause... Yeah, we'll yeah. do. All right. Do we have anything else? That. No. Other than a final motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Ann Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. See yes. you on the 5th. Have a yes. good holiday, everybody. You yeah. too. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You too.